بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله وبعد Continuation with the invalidators of the prayers and tonight inshallah it's a very important topic which is related to Satrul Awra Awra in Arabic it's a special term we cannot translate it uh, as um, genitals because genitals it's referring to just the private parts for both males and females but the word awra in Arabic ain wa ta referring to what it should be covered for both genders males and females and this including the private part and extra one of the requirements of the acceptance of the prayers to cover your aura not the genitals your aura whatever it is and this um, could be violated while you are making prayers for different reasons some people they do it intentionally because they don't know the rules some people they do it unintentionally because of their tight clothes most of those who are wearing jeans and not wearing something um, covering the uh, the um, bottom part they get exposed from their back because of the tightness of this type of clothes uh, some people uh, those who like uh, uh, sport huh? um, they play soccer sometimes they uh, just wear shorts and shorts sometimes are fine when you are standing but when you are falling down uh, doing ruku or sujood they might get shrank and they expose some some uh, some other parts very important to know the rules related to this and I will refresh your minds about the Islamic rules according to the four school of thoughts about awa in general in the prayers and outside of the prayers for men we have um, a chapter very confusing a chapter when it comes to the justification of the awa because we have some ahadith suggesting the awa to be in certain area and the authentic ahadith and some other ahadith suggesting the aura to be less than this and the authentic ahadith. and this one of the chapters in fiqh they are very com confusing and it should be discussed in a, spe a specific manners we have to go with the sequence of the hadith we have to go um, to see if there is some ahadith obligated the others and because of this, we have um, several opinions. The first one saying the aura in general, there is no difference between the aura in the prayers and outside of the prayer. The aura of the males in general, it's between the navel and the knees. The navel and the knees. And knees are included. They are part of it. Because they are using the hadith that the Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said Al-Awra min al-surra to al-rukta And in Hanafi, we, when we use the word to, ila, what is after ila is included Because the Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, the, the ayah, sorry, the Quran said اغسلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق to the elbow Then do we wash the elbow or not? We do it, then it's included. We don't do it like this. We do it to the elbow, and the elbow is included. The same thing from the navel to the knees, according to the Hanafi, they said, knees are included. And when you do the, your prayers, you should cover the knees fully. Also, when you walk in front of the others, or uh, the uh, like man wives or uh, relatives, also, you have to cover to, to cover this this part, and they use the hadith of Jarhat, 
uh, Ibn Razak, and this one of the uh, most important hadith in this, which is uh, uh, the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, ma fawqa al-rukbatayn min, sorry, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the heel passed by Darhan, and he said, cover your thighs. Because they are our. Cover your thighs because they are our. We have the second opinion. Also, they say the aura is from the navel to the knees, but both of them are not included. The navel is not included, and the knees are not included. But still, most of the area is included, and this is the opinion of Shafi'i and, uh, uh, and Hanbal. Shafi'i and Hanbal. They said that the aura of the man is from the navel to the knees, but both of them, these parts, navel and the, the knees, are not included because also they use the hadith reported by Imam al Darakutni from Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al Ansari. They said the aura is above the knees and below the navel. Above, above the knees, the knees and below the the navel, they said, Nabi Ali Sallallahu made it clear, it's a lengthy previous hadith, and he did not include both these uh, two parts. However, this hadith is, is not strong. The third opinion, which is the Maliki, they said, also, Aura is from the navel to the knees, but this for the prayers. However, if, um, Someone exposed his thighs. This is not prohibited, just it's only undesirable. But they make distinction between the major aura and the minor one. They have this term, the major one and the minor one. But they said for the prayers to cover from the navel to the knees. However, if you are walking, for example, and you uncover your thighs, this undesirable. You are not you are not sinful. Then the fourth opinion is from some of the Hanabila, Zahiriya, and uh, uh, some of the Shafi'i, some of the Maliki, uh, some people of the Hadith, they said the Aura is only the genitals, the private part. Thighs are not included and they use a strong Hadith that um, that the Nabi alayhi salatu was sitting one day and Abu Bakr came, he was uncovering his thighs. He did not change. Omar came, he did not change. Then Sayyidina Uthman came, he covered this part. Sayyida Aisha told him, my father came, you did not cover your thighs. And Omar, he said, Uthman is very shy. But it's related to Sayyidina Uthman, not, not related to the rules. Because if it's the rules, then Abu Bakr, Omar, there is no difference between uh, people. But he said, no, this is something related to Sayyidina Uthman, he was a very shy person. Um, and this was very well known in Medina. Uh, but they use this hadith to justify that the Nabi Ali Salaam will not he will not uncover uh, a private part. He will not uncover it. And also the hadith of Sayyidina Anas when he said I was sitting to a Nabi Ali Salatu Salaam thigh to thigh, uh, sorry, knees to knees. I was sitting and I was looking at the whiteness of his thighs. Then you cannot see the whiteness un unless it's, it's uncovered. And this hadith of Sayyidina Anas is hadith sahih also. The hadith sahih. And to be honest with you, this is the strongest hadith in the <laughs> as an authenticity. Not understanding. But as an authenticity, this is the strongest hadith in the uh, entire church. So if you go to the beach wearing our shorts, it's okay? Yeah, then, well, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on yeah, if you are following this this madhab, yes. Um, however, the scholar they use another analysis. Also, this they said yes, 
It could be acceptable, but this is not the ethics of the prayers. No, no, I'm not talking about prayers. It's a, I'm talking just, I'm just talking In general. Ah, yeah, oh, yes, yes. Go to the beach for swimming. Yeah, yes. No, not, not prayer. Yeah, according to this, this um, uh, scholars, Yes, according to this hadith, yes, you can you can do this, uh, you can do the minimum. But I just refresh your mind with the four uh, major opinions related to the uh, related to the awrah in general. Then, what is the Islamic rules if some part uncover? Remember, Ahnaf, the vast majority of scholars, full of school of practice, they said the awrah it's from the navel to the thigh. Okay? With some distinction here, a navel included, navel is not included, but they agreed on this part. What about if we decided to go with this opinion versus the genitals? Then what is the Islamic ruling if some part uh, of this uncovered? The Hanafi, they looked at, this is very important, looked at the area from the, the navel to the knees, not as a one area. No, this is different parts. You have the genitals, you have the thighs, you have the knees, you have the navel, and you have the, the back also. But they said, if you were uncovered for one part of this area, one part, not all of it, just even the thighs, one of them, and you kept it uncovered, for a full time of one pillar, like Rukua, one pillar, sujood like one pillar, standing in between, it's one pillar, okay? If it was exposed for one pillar, the time of one pillar, then your prayers is invalid. If it was uncovered for less than this, like for any reason, just uncovered and um, you pulled it down or you, um, Fold it up, you fixed it before the end of the time of the pillar, then your prayer is acceptable. But for example, we'll give you are wearing short, the long one, while you are standing, they are covering your knees. But when you did sujood, um, it shrank back, then you realize this before you move to the next pillar. If you pulled it down, this is acceptable. If you did not do it and just one knee was uncovered, this will make your prayers um, in, uh, in bed. Uh, also from the back, the issue of jeans. I see it many times, just when you come late and you watch people with jeans, mashallah, all of them, they need to repeat their prayers, uh, especially the fat ones. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not something to look at, but it just get, uh, it comes by accident. Um, but also the back, the back, which is um, anything below the navel, what is matching the navel from the back, was uncovered for the entire time of pillar, this will make the prayers uh, invalid. This is why I ask people to make sure that you are wearing um, something um, uh, enough to cover uh, the, uh, the back uh, part. Um, the, uh, and this, the uh, Hnaf, um, they make a distinction between if this is the full time of pillar or less than one pillar. We have the Malikiya and Shafi'iya are more strict. They said any uncover or even a less than a second this will make the prayers invalid. Regardless if you fixed it or you did not fix it. <clears throat> if it's uncovered, it's then you, uh, you broke your commitment to the prayer. Because the commitment is to keep the aura covered for the entire prayer. And you missed it even for a second. Then you need to repeat your prayer again. So you have to make sure that you are covering your aura all, all of the time. Um, but I'm, of course, we are talking about some rare uh, situations for most of the people, but sometimes you are traveling, sometimes you are playing, sometimes it could, it, it could happen. 
Hanamila, um, finally, uh, they made a distinction. They said, and they are the easiest in this part. The Hanbali in general of the issue of wudu and salah, they are the easiest. Not like the impression, oh, Hanbali, it's, it's very tough. No, they are the easiest in this, in this part. They said, we have to make a distinction between if this person was exposed completely or exposed halfway or exposed with little bit. If it's just little bit, then should not affect the prayers. It's little bit, like um, half of the uh, knee, huh? half of the knee. One knee, uh, and the other one is covered. Then we should not make a big issue, and the prayer is, um, is uh, acceptable. And also they said we have to look at the time of exposure. If it's a short time, then also it's not counted, because all of the short things in our Sharia ah, is they are excused. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excused us from eating and drinking while we are fasting. If we did this, forget it, right? But if just something got shrink and you uh, pushed it back, then you should not be, uh, this should not make your prayers um, uh, invalid because it could, it could happen. But the Hanabila, they said, for the, um, the, uh, the prayers to be invalid, the exposure of this area should be um, severe, and it should be for a long time. Other than that, if um, 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 someone got exposed for a very short time, then it's not counted. Finally, I would like to say, because we don't have many women, but they might watch, the aura for the sisters in the prayers, all of the body except for the face and the hands, and the hnaf added the feet. Um, for women, they should cover all of their body in any way, two pieces, one piece, whatever they wear, except for the face and the hands, the hands to here, and, uh, and the feet. But sometimes, also, our sisters, the, um, their hijab goes back, and some of their hair get exposed. The, the easiest madhab here is either Hanafi or, or Hanbali. Hanbali, they said, if it's little bit of, of the front, it's very hard to keep the hijab all the time, especially if it's a slippery. It's very hard to keep it all the time. Um, and uh, she could pull it back, and Hanafi or, even in the, in the Hanbali, they said it's fine because this is not a big exposure. And also, our sisters, when they make a takbir, Allahu Akbar, by, <laughs> yani by default, they will, some of their arms will be exposed, right? Yani you yourself, you say Allahu Akbar, huh? I got exposed. They are wearing the same clothes. They get exposed also. But according to um, the, um, the uh, um, Hanafi, they can pull it back uh, because this is not um, waste the entire time of filler, or even according to the Hanbali, um, if they did not pull it back, it's fine because this is not a severe exposure. Uh, is it clear? Okay. So if the sisters are within the sister group, even men? No, the, this will not make any difference. Even if you are praying by yourself, you cannot pray naked. In your, in your room, uh, same thing. The covering the aura has nothing to do with someone watching or not. Not in Hanaf. Yeah. And uh, the, according to the best we know. Say that and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us.